Good day and welcome to Season 1, Episode 3 in the OneDrive and SharePoint Performance Mini-Series. Today we're going to talk about implementing CDNs. CDNs are Content Delivery Networks, otherwise known as, or as caching locations um, that are located close to wherever the user is accessing the internet from. Bear in mind that if you access through a centralized proxy, it means it'll be wherever that centralized proxy server is. So I would check with your networking team to ensure that you're optimized at, for your, from a network connectivity perspective. We are uncovering networking today. Um, we may cover that in a later series. My name is Scott Stewart, and I'm a Senior Program Manager in the OneDrive and SharePoint Engineering Team. What you'll notice is that we have these little mini webcasts. They are 10, roughly 10-minute 10 uh, episodes, and we'll cover small segments in order to make it easier to consume. Um, I recommend watching previous episodes should you want more context, and then you'll notice that I do refer um, between the different episodes as well. Today's agenda is briefly going to talk about which CDNs to use. We'll talk about the command set a little. We'll dig, dive deeper into SharePoint PowerShell, implementing CDNs and CDN policies. Please note, this is not a developer session. This is a setting for administrators. They will then go and do this. Um, so we're not going to copy development today. We will also talk about CDNs. And we mentioned the SharePoint framework there simply to show you where when you deploy uh, SharePoint framework web parts, um, where the actual files or supported files go. You'll notice in each episode we also talk about helpful links. Right, so which CDNs to use? As I said, we covered this in a previous uh, episode, so I'm going to briefly cover it. Um, I want to touch on origins, otherwise known as folders or library locations. In CDNs, the terminology origin refers to the actual location where the files are. Please note that just because you've made an origin, doesn't mean that the C that it will create that location. You have to go and create the location in SharePoint and then go and specify it in CDNs. We do not verify the location exists. We assume that you have matched up the names. And this is on purpose because we wouldn't want different areas to be making changes in different places. You should go and set the location and then actually come in and actually set up the CDN for that purpose. We do have certain automatic origins, as we call them, and those are enabled uh, when you turn on public and private CDN. Right, today we'll be covering public and private. Is obviously a public common one, and I can't iterate enough. You should use these and not have these jQuery or JS files, or if there are other file types that are available from other CDNs, then use the CDN location. Don't save these into your own personal libraries. Right, so quickly on the command set. If we jump straight in, what you'll see is we'll go to get use the get command, we'll show you the tenant CDN uh, items that are available or commands that are available. You will see we follow standard practice of set, get, add, remove, for example, um, with get being, hey, go and get the setting, um, add, add the setting, remove, removing the setting. And then in certain cases, you'll use the set command and not an add uh, because you're setting certain properties, um, whereas an add is you're adding items. All right, so let's jump straight into that. Um, and you will jump into the demo, and the demo is going to be covering very brief on PowerShell and implementing CDNs. Please note this is not a PowerShell lesson, but an implementing CDNs using PowerShell lesson. Right, so let's jump straight on to PowerShell. As you can see, I'm using the SharePoint Online Management Shell. If you do not have this installed, please go and install it as, a, as an administrator. The person accessing and running this will need to be an administrator that has permissions to be able to connect to the service. What you'll notice is that the command line set that I'm actually going to be using, you'll see the URL is connect svo service with the URL being odspce test, that's the name of my um, actual tenant, dash admin dot on microsoft.com. You will simply replace your tenant name um, and you will still then connect to dash admin. All right, that is the connect to the administration part of the service. I've already done that, so what I'm now going to do is do the get command just to show you how that works. And I'm going to put tenant CDN so that you can see the command set. I have some PNP commands already installed as well. So today we won't be covering that. We'll be talking about the SPO ones, as you can see, in multiple places here. So in my particular case, um, I have private CDN already configured, but I don't have my public one. So I'm going to now go and configure it. How do I know what's con that it's configured? I would simply, I can simply then go and use the get command and say get dash spo tenant 
CDN enabled. And because there are two types I told you about, you need to specify the type. And in my case, I'm going to go and see enable private CDN. And if you'll see, I'll get back an answer and it tells me, yes, it's true, I have enabled it. If I did the same for public, you'll notice that I don't have public enabled and I will get back false. So I'm now going to go and set that because it's a policy. I'm now going to set it. And you'll also see that I will get a prompt to tell me that I, it is using a third party. Now I want to highlight that. Let me just go and run that quickly. And you'll notice that it says this feature is built on a third party application. Please check with your privacy team. You need to make sure you comply with your company's privacy policy. Obviously, this uh, has obviously got a commitment to our Microsoft Trust Center um, to make sure that we are, they obviously follow certain privacy standards and boundaries. If you've got regional boundaries, anything you'd be concerned with, run it past your privacy team. This is hosted by a company called Akamai, um, and they are a third party provider to Microsoft. Please note that there is no extra charge for the service. And we are currently looking at geographical boundaries and what can be done in that space. But at this time, this is the functionality of the CDN's address stand today. I'm going to say yes, because I want to use and enable public CDN. It will then fire off. And what you'll notice is it comes up with three default locations, master page, style library, and client side assets. What you will see from this is mine doesn't say configuration pending. Yours for the first time would say that. It means you've never configured it you'll get a little message saying configuration pending. It usually takes about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, up to 60 in some cases, but typically a 15 minute period for it to do this. You'll also notice the asterisk or the star in front of it that is a wildcard. And that actually says within any site collection, please go and find this location and use it in the public CDN. Should you not want to use that, you could simply say minus no default origins um, and we'll talk about origins shortly. These are what we call origins. They are folders or locations. If you don't want the defaults, and I do recommend the default for most, some people would want to individually control, that's your choice. Just bear in mind that if you don't take the defaults, this client side assets one, for example, is for use with the SharePoint framework, that's why it's mentioned. Any JS or any added files that are supported by CDN, if they are in a SharePoint framework web part, they will actually automatically go into this location and automatically be served from the CDN. So just bear that in mind should you choose not to use default. Right, so let's say, for example, I want to now understand this is public. What about my private settings? I told you they're already on. So how do I get what they are? I simply go get SPO tenant and I go CDN origins and I go minus and again CDN type. Don't forget that. And you're going to go CDN type, and I want to go and get the private one, and now I'll pull that back. And you'll notice I have a few locations specified already. The top three are by default, um, and then publishing images and company private CDN. Uh, those are the ones that I specified, particularly this one here as well. I want to draw your attention. I added that, um, a very simple command to do that. I would simply go and say add dash SBO tenant. CDN origins, and I would then go and say minus CDN type, and I'm going to say in this case private, and should I want to add that one, it's already added, but I want to show you how I added it, it's star company private CDN, and I would simply go and run it like that, and I would get that CDN added. Now, the reason I mentioned this one is I chose to separate my private data or images aside and for the simple reason that sometimes we want our publishers or our content owners or authors, whoever they are, to use a specific location for private so we can group them together. I chose to do this in this scenario. Just to show you a different CDN, I'm going to just go and call this my private CDN just so you can see the command set run. Uh, in fact, sorry, I forgot the forward slash. Oopsie daisy. So let's go. My, start my private. So that would be my private. I'm going to add that one. Oh, and I haven't specified it correct. What did I miss? If you have a look back here, what you'll see is I miss saying minus origin URL. You've got to specify. Each of these are properties that you've got to go and specify. So I said private minus origin URL, and that's the origin URL. So I'm going to go and add that. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to do this? And if I say yes, 
you'll notice it'll come back and you'll say configuration pending. And again, that takes about 15 minutes or so to run. If I want to check the policies, I can say get SBO tenant. And what is the policy? Well, that's the file type um, that I want to go and get. And again, CDN type, get used to the fact that it's public or private because they can have different uh, policies or different uh, items here that you can specify. Um, and I'm going to go run that. And it's going to come back and say, hey, these are the file extensions. There are no restricted classifications and so on and so on. If I want to change these, please bear in mind, you need to copy the entire row, physically take that. And if I want to add new um, policies, then I would actually have to go and say, uh, set this policy. So I say set CDN policy, uh, set uh, SBO tenant, come on, SBO tenant, CDN policy, and I'm going to go CDN type. Don't forget the type, and in my case, private. Uh, since my typing is off today, <laughs> private. And I'm then going to go and say what the policy type is. And if I do it, I would have to specify all of the old ones first, then a comma, and whatever my new one is. So, for example, if I wanted to support a different type in here, um, let's say uh, it's not PNG or GIF, uh, what's another pick, whatever the type might be, I would have to go and do that. I cannot just add one. I have to add them all back. It is a string variable, so you would have to then go and add them all back. All right, and I would simply then fire that off. Now, there are obviously other commands. I might go through every command set, but to get you started, you simply need to enable the CDN, make sure you've cleared it with your privacy team, and you will then have default out-of-the-box CDNs. As simple as that. Right, so let's go back and briefly finish off. You'll see the next part that we cover is CDNs and SharePoint Framework. While I'm not gonna cover too much on this, you'll notice that when, when I've enabled public CDN, client-side assets is there, and I've got a SharePoint Framework web part here, and you'll notice the JS file will automatically go into that location as well. Public CDN starts with the words public CDN, private with private, but notice a big difference in the URLs. Public is a fixed URL, but please do not hard code this. A further episode, you will see if you need to use this in your client-side code, we will show you how to do that. There is a property available on the page that allows you to take that, that. The reason is that may change in the future, and we don't want you to be stuck having to go change all your code. Private CDN recycles every 60 minutes, so please never hard code this. It, is, it will not work for longer than 60 minutes. And then you'll notice these other CDN URLs here, and these are ones that Microsoft uses internally in order to actually uh, load our, our own files from CDN. And now helpful links. And you'll notice this episode was fractionally longer than others, but doing a demo on CDNs, I felt it necessary to take a little bit extra time on it. These are good links for you to go to. Um, thank you once again for your time today, and please keep watching.